So I'm almost certain if you're watching this video that you've probably seen clips of Milo Murphy's Law on YouTube with Doofenshmirtz and Phineas and Ferb in them, but have just never bothered checking out the actual show. To which I say, go watch Milo Murphy's Law on Disney Plus so that it gets a third season. Please. But, but uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's talk about why Doofenshmirtz is in the show and his journey as a character in Milo Murphy's Law. Today's episode of Phineas Flynn's Law is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash Phineas Flynn's Law and for just $1 you get early access to all of my videos and your name seen at the end of every video. So I'm going to do my best to avoid as many spoilers as possible, but there are a few needed to discuss this since Milo Murphy's Law is a plot driven show. But first, let's back up to the end of Phineas and Ferb. In the last day of summer, Doofenshmirtz finally decides to live a life of good after his daughter Vanessa helps him realize who he really is. I am evil! No, Dad, you're basically a nice guy who's pretending to be evil. A good guy? Me? I could be... Well, I guess I could. I... I... I could be a do-gooder, doing good, just for the sake of doing good. Or I, what do exactly do good guys do? From then on, the creators of Phineas and Ferb tried a few different things to continue the story of Doofenshmirtz as a good guy. For one, there was Doof 101, where Doof was forced to complete public service as a school teacher due to his many, many crimes. When that didn't get picked up, there was The Alka Files, a show that was ultimately cancelled, but Disney still produced the pilot episode as a standalone 45 minute special. The canonicity of these two episodes is kind of in question, but the point is, Doof is officially good post Phineas and Ferb. Now, in the Milo Murphy's Law story, Cavendish and Dakota are time travelers from the future. 2175 to be precise. I know, dramatic shift, but stick with me. Time travel has its own bureau in the future and was invented by a legendary person named Professor Time, who legally changed his name to that <laughs> for branding purposes. Now back in the present, a long string of bad events lead Cavendish, Dakota, Milo, and Orton to need a time vehicle, but they're unable to find one, so they go to find Professor Time to see if he can invent time travel early, knowing that he lived in Milo's time period. And lo and behold, the famous inventor of time travel is none other than Dr. Dupin. It's our favorite baddie turn goodie, and he gets to work saving the world, preserving the future, stopping World War V. So they work together to save Danville from the crisis by Doof literally just remembering in the future that he needs to come back and save them. We see Doof come from the future as Professor Time in this futuristic time machine, and honestly, this is one of the best moments in the whole show, so go watch it. This all took place around the end of Milo season one through the first episode of Milo season two, AKA the crossover. But Dan and Swampy kind of tricked Disney into letting them keep Doof around in the show. What's funny is first season on Milo, we were thinking, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this big build to this big reveal that, that, that it's all connected. And then once we reveal that it's all connected, we'll be able to bring characters like Doofenshmirtz and, and Monogram and whatever into Milo whenever we want. And, and, you know, and the, and the studio will not be the wiser. We'll have, we'll sort of, we'll have fooled them. We'll have fooled them. And then once we reve revealed that at the end of the first season, we showed them what we were doing with the crossover special. Their only request for second season was, would it be okay with you guys if we sort of made Doofenshmirtz a minor character in, Finia, in, in Milo? That's if awesome. If we brought him in as like a, a, like a regular character. And we were like, um, We'll think about it and get back. <laughs> yeah, well, let's think about it. We're like, close the work. It worked. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Uh, so it was fun. <laughs> so at the end of the crossover, Doof's building is destroyed by Lardy Boy, and he's forced to crash on Milo's couch. My building! Uh, I crash on your couch. We don't question the numerous deaths of the workers in Doofenshmirtz Evil Inc. However, Doof is much closer to his Phineas and Ferb persona in Milo Murphy's Law than his persona as the far off Professor Time. Meaning he's a bit more incompetent. I don't know, but he has poor planning skills. Well, actually, the stuff that goes wrong around me is different. It's caused by my. Uh, um, Stupidity? Incompetence? I was gonna say poor planning, but thank you for that. At first, he just kind of pops up around the Murphy's house, basically sleeping on the couch. But once he's been there for about a month and he decides he sees the Murphys as his parents, he sets up shop in their backyard with Doofenshmirtz Good Incorporated to pursue his goal of becoming Professor Time. Doofenshmirtz Good Incorporated! 
I have no idea where that comes from. However, Alka still keeps Perry watching Doof throughout this journey to ensure that he doesn't accidentally cause harm while doing good, which is something that tends to happen. Hey, the platypus, why are you stopping me? I was doing good. I took my gun. Huh? Oh. Doof really feels discouraged when he struggles to do good, but can't, and this strains his relationship with Perry. Perry's literally trying to convince him that he is doing good, but secretly cleaning up his messes, since it's his job, and distracting Doof. This all comes to a head when Doof finds out that Perry was on the clock while helping him become good, and Doof gets really upset. That's it, Perry the Platypus, we are through! I mean, I know we've had our rough patches before, and everyone does, but this time, you hurt me, Perry the Platypus! You hurt me! While they're going through their breakup, Doof has a good number of side adventures with the Murphy family and the main trio of kids, as well as other side characters in the show. He keeps trying to build innators and learn to be good as he pursues becoming Professor Time. At one point, Vanessa comes to check up on him, and it's kinda weird they didn't address her whereabouts sooner, but it's great to see Vanessa again. Doof finds Norm's head in the rubble of Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated and tries to give him a new body. And eventually, Doof becomes close friends with Dakota, which is especially funny since both of them are voiced by Dan Pobemeyer. I'm kind of giving a loose summary here, but that's generally the context for why Doof is in Milo Murphy's Law. His building crashed, so he crashed on Milo's couch. I don't want to spoil all the fun twists and turns the show has to offer with Doof being in it. Again, I highly recommend giving this show a shot at the bare minimum to find out if Perry and Doof ever get over their breakup. Oh, the relationship drama. Don't you act sassy with me. I've never looked at another cot. Milo Murphy's Law is a lot of that. <coughs> to my regular viewers, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. I'm guessing you probably already knew all this stuff, so I do have a deeper theory video about Bob Block coming up next. You can see me go over the script for it in my first quarantine live stream, and I do have more quarantine live streams coming, so stay tuned for those. Next up, gonna be dropping up the highlights of my interview with Aaron Daniel Jacob, which you can also see the full version of in the second quarantine live stream. And I recently revamped my Patreon. So if you wanna go ahead and take a look at the newly updated tiers, I have definitely changed a few things around for just $1. You'll get early access to all my videos, as well as your name in the credits of every video. So if you wanna go support me, patreon.com slash Phineas Flynn's Law. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time on Phineas Flynn's Law.